In this video, I'm going to be talking about getting my hands on the Sony Burano. Here's the story. So last night, I was fortunate enough to go to a launch for the Sony Burano here in Melbourne, Australia. This was a great opportunity to get my hands on the Sony Burano and ask some questions that I might have about this new camera. It was also a good opportunity to network with other video producers in the Melbourne area and have some great food and drinks. Speaking of good drinks, if you live in Melbourne and you love coffee, you need to know about Bermuda Coffee Roasters, who are sponsoring this video. They produce specialty high-grade coffee, ethically sourced, locally roasted in Melbourne, and always delivered fresh. Now, normally, I don't drink coffee, but when I do, it's Bermuda Coffee. And they've been kind enough to set us up with a discount code YSS20 for 20% off your first order. So check them out today if that's something that appeals to you. Back to the Sony Burano. So when I first heard about the Sony Burano, there were a few things that stood out to me. The first thing that stood out to me was obviously the variable ND and IBIS combo that is now available for the first time in a cinema camera. And when I asked the Sony rep about this last night, I said, what's changed in the last few months where we've been told repeatedly that it was impossible to have IBIS and a variable ND in the same camera body? And his response was, for the mirrorless cameras, which a lot of people are requesting this function for, the camera bodies are just too small and it can't really fit all that tech in a small form factor like that. However, the Burano being a larger cinema camera has more space and room to be able to fit both of those things together. And traditionally, people that are using a camera like the Sony Burano aren't asking for a built-in variable ND and a image stabilization or IBIS in the same camera at the same time. And you might hear that answer and think, mm, that doesn't sound right. Who wouldn't want a variable ND and IBIS in the same camera body? But when you're working with a camera like the Sony Burano, traditionally you would have big teams working around it. You'd have the budget and also the means and capability to put that camera onto a gimbal and then you don't really need to have IBIS in the actual camera. And when I was given that answer, I thought, okay, that's fair enough. And then I asked about the IBIS and it is supposed to be the same IBIS technology that we find in the Sony mirrorless cameras or the latest technology. So it should be hopefully better than the A7S III and probably more like the A7R5 IBIS. A firm number wasn't given, but you would expect that the performance of the Sony Burano's IBIS would be something very similar to the Sony A7R5. I own a Sony FX6 and that has the built-in electronic variable ND that the Sony Burano has as well. But when you put a polarizer on your lens, it does some weird stuff to the image and you get some weird colors. I've been assured that that problem has been solved with the Sony Burano and I've been told that the glass for the variable ND in the Sony Burano is thinner than what it is on the FX6 and then that enables the image to be cleaner and not have any weird color changes or anything like that if you put a polarizer on your lens. So that was a handy thing to know because that was one of the little gotchas that I had with the Sony FX6. You want to use the variable ND and then you put the polarizer on and now your shots aren't usable. That's been solved in the Sony Burano. With my Sony FX6, I love using the top handle on that to be able to use the MI shoe adapter so I can get audio to go straight into the camera without having to have any XLR cables plugged into the camera body. I did ask if the top handle from the Sony FX6 could be used with the Burano, but I was told, no, that can't be done. It has to be the Sony FX9 top handle. So if you want to have the MI shoe capabilities with your Sony Burano, it has to be the Sony FX9 top handle, not the FX6, just to clarify. Also, when I was first looking into this camera, the biggest red flag that I had for this camera was crops. When I saw the word crop, I thought, oh no, this isn't good. But I did ask about shooting in 4K 25p and whether there'd be any sort of crop on it. And I was told there is a slight crop and it's about a 1.07. So it's nothing super aggressive like a Super 35 1.5 or a Micro Four Thirds two times crop. It's a, in my opinion, manageable 1.07 crop. And that's for 4K 25p. Now it is an 8.6K sensor and I don't want to get bogged down too much in all the details uh, about how the sensor works and all the different formats and crops and all that. I'm sure there are other videos that can clearly explain it a lot better than me, but I did find after talking to the Sony rep 
this camera is usable for the types of videos that I would wanna do. My biggest concern was if I was to have the 8.6K sensor and then go to 4K if there would be some sort of aggressive crop, but it does sound like there's only a 1.07 crop, which is completely usable on my end. However, if I did do 4K 50p, I'm not too sure if that 1.07 crop then gets pushed even further. So that's one thing to look for in the future. In hindsight, I really should have tested it out while I had a Burano right in front of me just to see if there was a different crop, but I didn't get a clear answer if there is more of a crop on the 50p format when shooting in 4K. So that is something that I do still need to confirm in the future. Another thing that stood out was the dual native ISO. This has 800 and 3200, whereas my FX6 has 812,800. and 12,800. Having that 12,800 is really good for shooting in basically no light, whereas having 3200 ISO is really good for shooting in low light. And I do believe that the 3200 ISO should be enough for me to be able to get the types of shots that I need from events and other things like that, where there is low light, but not no light. So not having that super high 12,800 ISO and only having 3200 ISO imagine saying that even five years ago, uh, is not a deal breaker for me and actually might be a little bit more usable because I do find sometimes 12,800 ISO is a little bit too high and I need to either stop down my lens, but if I want a specific f-stop like f2 or something like that, and then I'm having to stop it down to 6.3 or f8, I then sometimes put the variable ND in, which will then at its lowest setting cut out two stops. So there are workarounds, but having that 800, 3200 dual base native ISO might actually be a lot more realistic and easy to work with than having that 800 and then super high 12,800. And the last thing I wanna to touch on is the power out options that the Sony Burano has. The Sony Burano is powered by V-mount batteries, which is great because that's what I use to power my FX6 with the Tilter V-mount adapter. However, what I like about the Tilter adapter is it has D-tap and other power options out of it. So I can power other things like a wireless transmitter and my monitor. Whereas the Sony Burano doesn't have this straight out of the box on the camera. So if you do wanna have that option, there are actually third-party manufacturers who are already making this stuff. Wooden Camera is one of these companies that is creating these V-mount adapters to have extra power out options. So that is something that I would consider purchasing if I was to get a Sony Burano, because it just makes things a little bit easier being able to power everything just from that one V-lock battery and not have to worry about other power solutions for other things on my camera rig. So am I gonna get the Sony Burano? And right now it's a firm maybe, because when I look at it, it's a great camera, but the Sony FX6 is also a great camera as well, and I don't have any major problems with it. The biggest problem I have with the Sony FX6 is it doesn't have IBIS, whereas the Sony Burano does. But the Sony Burano also has other things like internal RAW that I probably never will use, but I'd be paying a premium price just to be able to use that function in the Sony Burano, which I probably won't ever use. So right now, when I think about it, I'd be paying over four times the amount of a Sony FX6 to get the Sony Burano just to have IBIS added to essentially an FX6 for my needs. Yes, the Sony Burano does a lot more than what the FX6 does. It's an 8.6K sensor, but I don't need to shoot 8K. Most of the shoots that I do require 4K 25P and sometimes 50P as well if I'm getting B-roll. And I did recently have a conversation with another video producer just talking about the Sony Burano and mentioning if I did own the Sony Burano, could I charge my clients more to have that camera? And realistically, at the end of the day, the answer is no. I can't charge more to my clients just to have this new whiz bang uh, latest camera because the camera that I'm already shooting with is more than enough for all these types of jobs. And a lot of the time the jobs are people talking to camera and then B-roll. So right now, looking at the Sony Burano, it does look like a really exciting camera and having a lot of all this interesting tech working together for the first time, like the variable ND and the IBIS, and then also the different ISO settings and different resolutions and all that kind of stuff. So it'll be really interesting to see what Sony brings out in the future as well after the Sony Burano. 
I saw a video last night already talking about rumors of the Sony FX9 Mark II. So who knows, that might be on the horizon sometime soon. And that could potentially be my next big cinema camera that I purchase to replace the FX6. But right now, I'm not in a rush to upgrade my Sony FX6. It still does a great job. Hope you enjoyed this video.